Hi, I'm Brady Daniels, and welcome to my new video series, Brady's Blunders. In each episode of this series, I will highlight one particular board position in which I made a huge mistake. I'll show how my opponent punished me, and then I will show how a go professional says I should have played, usually with several variations. My hope is that this video series will be most beneficial to Q players, as they strive to not make the same mistakes that I make. But I hope Dom players get a kick out of it, too. One feature of these videos is that because each is about a single board position, they should be short, as in 10 or 15 minutes. And there's a lot of good Go English material out there, but it usually tends to be half hour or an hour or even longer. So hopefully there's space out there for shorter material. In this first video, I'm going to show how my name became a verb at the most recent U.S. Go Con. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, let's move on to our first game. This comes from the 2015 US Go Congress about a month ago, and I'm playing black. Um, this is a three-down game against Jeffrey Rolfs. Jeffrey is a good, solid opponent. He went four and two in, in this year's Open, so he's a good player, and this was a good test. Uh, in this game, we battled back and forth early on. Well, to be honest, mostly he chased me around the board, uh, which I didn't like. And then I lived inside his territory, which he didn't like. But in the end, the game came down to this. Um, uh, I went all in on an attack on the group labeled A. And as a matter of fact, A was White's last move. And I was going all in to try to kill it. Um, so White has just played A. What I would like to do now is recommend uh, that you pause the video and go ahead and consider for a minute or two what you would play after white plays A. Go ahead and do that. Okay, did you give it some thought? Um, I would wager that nobody, or almost nobody, who watched this video will have played the move that I played after white played A. Uh, let me start by showing that and the continuation. Um, when white played A, I played this and I showed it uh, later on. I reviewed it with my teacher and she, she laughed at me and said, Brady, this, this is a pass. This isn't even a move. And she's completely right. And I'll show exactly what I was thinking a little bit later. But for now, let me just continue with the, with how the game actually went. So white pushed through here, uh, and I went and connected my stone. Then he went to play here, so I had to deny, deny him an eye. Uh, then white played here, threatening a co. I had no way in the world I had co threats up to this challenge, so I connected. He cut, I forced, and then I threatened to split him. But at this point, I've already lost the fight. Uh, this group here will have less liberties than this group here and the game is effectively over. The move I played uh, was definitely the wrong move and just proved the point, but uh, even if I played correctly, I was in deep trouble. And at this point, I threw my hands up and resigned and said, good game. Um, so let me back up to the point where I played this move and show what I was thinking. Um, let's say I pass, which is what the one one symbolizes. What fantasy I had is that if white played this, it made A and B equivalent plays. So if I went and protect the stone at B, he would cut at A, cutting off these stones here. And if I protected at A, then he would cut at B, gaining a second eye. Of course, this is crazy. If I protected A, he can't play B because that would be self-Atari. Uh, but for some reason, because of Bioyomi, I suppose, I didn't see it. I missed it completely. <clears throat> and therefore, I made a B2 bomber pass. Um, so what else could I have played? I mean, would any other move have won the game? Well, any other move might have been better, but it's still not as clear-cut as it looks. I mean, I look at this board still, and I think, okay, yeah, black wins. But say... Black decides that uh, White's moving this stone here out is the biggest threat and decides to just pick it up, right? That's certainly better than a pass. But 
the situation is still awkward for black because white will still just push through. And at this point, black should play this. Remember, in the actual game, I played this. This is a single purpose move. This connects, which I needed to do. But this move would have been better because it both connects and threatens to cut. At any rate, let's assume I even play this better move. Then white goes ahead and plays this, threatening to make the second eye. So again, I take it away. And then white uh, plays this move, which is an Atari. So uh, black fixes his shape. And then white fixes shape. And at this point, already, uh, black is going to lose the Liberty race, just like in the real game. It looks like black's got a real, t a really cool Tsuji. Uh, by playing this, which threatens to cut the single stone, and if white saves it, then black can capture all six of these stones, and that, that surely must be good. The only problem is that with proper play, uh, wait the situation. Say uh, white should play here. If black tries to connect, white would play this. Uh, if black eats that stone, then white can play this. Black is correct in thinking that he can pick up these white stones. But what he can't do is connect here because then he's short of liberties. So black needs to keep picking up stones and then white puts black in Atari again so black eats these stones. But white's now connected out. By capturing the tail, white is captured out, connected out, in sente, able to fix the top side and has an easy game. So this situation does not work for black. So what that means is black can't play just anything. Black needs to play correctly. When I looked at it, I thought this was correct. I thought, okay, that uh, that's going to help this cutting point. It's going to help capture this stone. Um, it threatens to connect out here, capturing these four. I was pretty confident that this must be the best play, but it's not because white, again, can move through. And uh, when black does this, white once again does this, which looks suicidal. Um, I apologize, that's the wrong order. White again plays this, black denies the second eye, and now white plays this, which is an Atari, but it looks like white's just killing himself, but white's not. White Ataris again, and then white connects. Black instinctively wants to try to capture these four stones, but in doing so, leaves them with two liberties and gets captured himself. So that doesn't work. So black needs to not uh, try to capture those. Instead, take the free Atari of stones that cut everything, and then go ahead and make sure that he himself cannot get cut. This gives white time to fix white shape. And at this point, black needs to start gaining liberties to win the race against this. This actually works, and black can capture these stones. But in doing so, black is probably going to lose all of these stones. So while this is way better than what I played, uh, it's not the best that black can do. So where did you play as black? Uh, this doesn't work as well as can be, and this didn't work as well, and certainly my play didn't work as well. All of white's variations started with a cut here, or included a cut here. So what if black just protects against that? When white pushes through, black comes out. If white tries to build an eye, again, black can take it away. If white connects there trying to gain liberties, uh, it's really already over. At that point, black can come here and continue to build liberties. Um, black shape is strong enough that it can't be cut, and white has no place to get a second eye. So the game uh, is effectively over. So uh, this move at uh, right here, the good move, did you find it? If so, you just might be better than Brady. Ah. Oh yeah, I mentioned I was going to uh, explain how my name became a verb. When my teacher, Jenny Shen, she's a Tudan from China, currently living in Santa Barbara, um, when she reviewed this game with me, Nick Sibiki was sitting with us. And when I did my pass, my B2 bomber pass, um, 
And, and Jenny said, Brady, you know, this is a pass and looked at the continuation. And she said, why do you always do this? You do this so often in your games where you spend the whole game building a really great position and you win the game. And then somehow you give it away at the end, um, whether it's a pass like this or, or, or something else. And Nick, Nick kind of laughed and I laughed. I mean, she, she said it quite strongly and, um, and it was funny, sort of, but uh, what made it funnier was the next day, uh, Jenny met uh, Nick after his Congress game, his second co open game. And she said, hey, Nick, how'd you do? And he looked at her sheepishly and said, Jenny, I braided today. Which had her laughing, had him laughing. And of course, they shared the story with everybody. And that is how my name became a verb. To brady was to do an epic blunder, almost inexplicably. And uh, people remember that for the rest of the Congress. And, and it amused me. Now, honestly, I wish my name wasn't synonymous with an epic blunder. And my hope is that someday it won't be, but I'm going to have to earn that. In my next game, the mistake comes far earlier. I didn't wait till the end game to make an impressive mistake. But if you want to see it, you're going to have to watch the next video. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll like it or comment or subscribe whatever. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thank you.